In this unit we will talk about the unit cell, one of the most fundamental concepts in the area of crystallography. And we will do this in the following way. I will give you a task. I will show you a body, a particular space or a volume element, and you are supposed to divide this body into identical pieces, identical building blocks, that will in turn constitute this volume element if you reassemble these units together. But there are two constraints, or two rules. Firstly, you should only use regular building blocks. And secondly, you should only use a single sort of building blocks. Let's start with this big cube over here. Consider a while how you can divide this cube into smaller, identical pieces. Well, I think a quite natural approach is to divide this big cube into a lot of smaller cubes. So the deconstruction process ends with such a tiny cube over here. And a cube is characterized by the length of the edges. They are all the same, A equals B equals C. And the angles between the faces, which are all orthogonal, 90 degrees. This is of course not the only possibility. Another possibility is to slice this big cube into horizontal slices or vertical slices, that would be the same in the end. And this results in these thin square plates as building blocks. As in the case before, with orthogonal faces, all angles are 90 degrees, but now with a square basal plane and rectangular lateral planes. Yet another possibility to divide this big cube into identical building blocks is shown here. This deconstruction process leads to rectangular prisms as building blocks. Everything is orthogonal again, but all edges differ in length. Ok, let us change the initial body, the starting volume, that we want to divide into identical subunits. Look at this piece. From what subunits could this shape be built? Think about it for a few seconds. Did you get it? Yes, you are right. This shape can be subdivided into hexagonal columns or prisms. A hexagonal prism consists of eight faces. And this is different to the other building blocks that we have seen so far. All were composed of only six faces. They are hexahedra. And the question is, is it possible to generate a smaller body out of this hexagonal column that is A, regular, B, that constitute via assembling this hexagonal prism, and C, in turn, this overall big shaped volume here, and D is composed of only six faces. In principle, there are two conceivable possibilities. Firstly, we can divide this hexagonal column in such a way that we cut it along this long axis into two identical halves. And if you look from above onto this column, then we see this shape as a cross-section. There's a second possibility. We can divide it into three identical pieces from the center on, like this. Then a single block would have a basal plane whose length are equal and a longer edge along this side over here. The angle between these two edges is then 120 degrees. If you look again from above onto this, then we see such a cross-section. What possibility is preferable? Well, two aspects. Firstly, this shape is obviously not as regular as this, because there are three different faces, and here we have only two. Secondly, and this is even more important, if you want to build up our initial shape by assembling these building units, then it is not possible if we consider only one orientation. If we use the shape and translate this again and again and push them together, voids will be remaining. This means it is not possible to fill this space completely by this translation operation only. 
Only if we use this shape in two different orientations, the space would be filled completely. And this is different to the second case. Here we can build a completely space-filling form if we translate this shape and push them together. Only one oriented version of this shape is needed. Ok, and now we are able to generalize the concept of the unit cell, namely by finding an answer to this question. Which geometrical regular bodies fill the space completely, this means without remaining voids, by joining them together by translation only along all three spatial directions? And the very general answer to this question is, these are parallelly pipeheads. What is a parallelly pipehead? Here you see a parallelly pipehead in its general form. And the definition is as follows. Epipedio is Greek and means face. And a parallelly pipehead is a geometrical body which is confined by six parallelograms of which two of each are congruent, superimposable, and lie in parallel planes. Look at this sketch of a parallelly pipette again. There's one pair of parallelograms here in red, which are superimposable and lie in parallel planes. One in the front, one in the back. Then there is this pair in green, the side faces, also lying in parallel planes and being superimposable. And finally there is the basal plane and the top surface, also parallel and superimposable. In general, the length of the edges A, B and C are different and the angles between the faces are oblique. Ok, now we can define the unit cell of a crystal. The unit cell is the unit which builds up the whole crystal structure by repeated translation along all three spatial directions.